This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and the space industry right now is ramping up to incredible levels with the launch of astronauts from American soil on SpaceX's Crew Dragon coming up in under two weeks now. This is the first crewed launch in almost a decade from America. Starship development continues to accelerate with the SN4 testing progressing successfully and heading towards that 150 metre test flight. That is going to be incredible to see. The SN5 tank segments now completely stacked with SN6 segments progressing steadily as well. The Mars Perseverance rover mission that includes the wonderful little Mars helicopter Ingenuity is still on schedule to launch in around five weeks time and another Starlink mission just days away now with a booster that has already flown previously four times. Will this be the first booster to make five successful landings? We'll soon find out. Okay Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Now, a week ago, the SN4 prototype was just getting ready to do another full cryogenic pressure test using liquid nitrogen. Back in late April, the same Starship did have a lower pressure test done in this way, but that was only up to 4.9 bar, which Elon did say at the time was kind of a softball, but that's enough to fly. After all of the recent static fire tests, I suspect SpaceX really wanted to put this thing through a full pressure test because on Saturday the 9th, just before midnight, Elon announced that the SN4 had passed the high pressure test at 7.5 bar along with the engine thrust load at cryogenic temperatures. So yes, after that second round of proof testing for Starship SN4, the countdown is really on as we head to the first 150 meter flight. Now a few days before those tests occurred, the Raptor engine number 18 that had successfully completed the static fire tests was removed before the hydraulic ram test structure was put back in place for the cryogenic test. Now we had expected that same Raptor to return after the tests had been concluded, but surprisingly it was another Raptor, the SN20, that came rolling back out down the road on Sunday, ready for installation into the SN4 Starship. Now we suspect after the previous static fire test that they really wanted to get the SN18 Raptor checked out in much more detail. So this we think is why it was another Raptor brought in here. The plan was to then complete another static fire of this engine prior to the 150 meter flight. Construction on site continued at a fast pace with collections of ring segments and nose cones scattered around the site. The ring sections continue to roll out quickly and there is no shortage of steel about it seems. We also saw the stacking of SN5 very early in the week as well and it's just fantastic to see another prototype almost ready for testing now. What will this version go on to achieve hot on the heels of SN4's great test successes so far? We're edging closer to seeing more significant test flights and I'm sure the entire community cannot wait for that. We've also recently seen this new test stand come together which of course will be needed if SpaceX would like to have more Starships in testing simultaneously. This just goes to show the speed of progress here and I'm sure that after all of this is completed we'll soon start to see the plumbing action getting this new test stand ready for placement. Now the static fires have continued to be pushed back several times during the week. As it stands right now we have a number of assumptions going on suggesting the static fire should be coming over the next 24 hours or so with the 150 meter hop planned this coming week. That is going to be incredible to see. Now a bunch of talk has occurred based on this logo here snapped by S Padre during the week showing what appears to be Falcon 9-ish style landing legs. Now there's a lot of debate around this because Elon Musk stated just two weeks ago that the super Super Heavy will have 31 engines, not 37, no big fins, and legs similar to the Starship. Now if we follow everything we've seen recently, this will mean a very different style to what many are thinking around this patch here. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on this one. The next two Starships, the SN5 and SN6, have made significant progress over the week, and as always, Raphael has been tweeting out his regular updates providing a best guess as to the sections of Starships we see all over the construction site. Firstly, the SN5. Most of this obviously very clear cut now. We obviously have the full tank stack constructed, including the header tank and downcomer inside, and then the main fairing made up of these ring segments here. We are at this point making the assumption that the nose cone and header tank will likely form part of this SN5, assuming this all tests out okay for a flight with three Raptor engines. Over to the SN6, there is a little more guesswork here. We've already seen several bulkheads which should make up the liquid methane tank and the common bulkhead for the liquid oxygen tank. Several sections of the ring stacks are believed to make up more components of the stack here as well. The nose cone could possibly be the one here spotted just the other day, which is looking even more accurately built than all previous versions. It really is exciting to see just how far they've come over the last month or so. On top of all that, I just had to share Raphael's 3D model here 
showing a potential super heavy setup. The central engines all have just enough space to gimbal using this design. It may still be a while away, but it's going to be amazing to see the super heavy design unfold. Nice work as always, Raphael. Highly recommended following Raph there on Twitter. Now just keep in mind we also have Starlink's 8th mission due to lift off, currently scheduled for May 17th, so keep your eye out for that launch. This will bring the total number of Starlink satellites launched to 482, those two of course being the Tintin A and B test satellites which were launched all the way back in February of 2018. Most interesting I think for this mission is the booster core which has already flown four times before. This is booster designated B1049 and it's previously flown on the Telstar 18 Vantage mission and Iridium number 8, along with two previous Starlink missions, the very first set of Starlink satellites launched in May 2019 and the Starlink mission from January this year. So this is again a fifth booster launch. Now a Falcon 9 booster has flown five times before back in March, but sadly we didn't see that get recovered with it failing to successfully land on the drone ship. So yes, will this be the very first booster recovery after a fifth flight? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now if Starlink in general is new to you, I do have a more in-depth summary in this video talking about how this incredible network is going to roll out. While you're here of course, please do consider subscribing. There is loads more news coming with Crew Dragon and Starship development and I'd love to share all that with you. Now great news with the upcoming Mars Perseverance rover mission that includes the wonderful little Mars helicopter Ingenuity mounted in underneath. It looks like the amazing efforts between NASA and the United Launch Alliance has managed to keep the launch on track for the target launch window to Mars coming up in around five weeks. Meeting this target window is extremely important for the mission of course because if it misses that window there will not be another for approximately two years and two months which is of course the time it will take the orbits of Earth and Mars to match back up again for a similar launch window. So yes it's exciting to know that this mission is still on track. With that launching on time it should mean the vehicle will arrive at Mars to touch down around February 18th in 2021. It's certainly going to be a big highlight next year. The most recent work completed included attaching the aeroshell's back shell as well as attaching the rover itself to the descent stage. The back shell holds the parachute systems used to assist in the landing prior to the rocket powered touchdown of the rover onto the surface of Mars. So yes, the rocket shooting this mission for Mars into low Earth orbit in five weeks time will be the Atlas V with the 541 configuration. These three numbers here tell us the characteristics of the setup here with this rocket. The 5 tells us that it's the 5.4 meter fairing that will be used to cover the payload which is the largest option available for the Atlas V. The number 4 tells us how many solid rocket boosters will be attached to the core to help rapidly lift the entire vessel off the pad and gain speed before they are jettisoned away. The third digit which in this case is the number 1 tells us that there will be a single RL-10A engine on the Centaur stage. As a bonus to this mission of course we not only have the new Perseverance rover touching down but we also have the Mars helicopter Ingenuity which if all works as planned will be the first vehicle to have a powered flight on another planet. This is a technology demonstration to test out the idea of flights within the extremely thin atmosphere of Mars which is only around 1% of that here on Earth. Ingenuity weighs a little under 2 kilograms or around 4 pounds and with these thick blades spinning extremely quickly the helicopter should have enough power with a single flight to fly for around 90 seconds which could allow it to cover distances up to 300 meters at a time. This may not seem like a lot of air time but the cameras on board will allow a massive amount of research to be done with a single flight and that will hugely aid the mission of the rover. Of course flying this little baby is a different ball game compared to the slow methodical movements made by the rover. Due to the communication distance between Mars and Earth there is simply no way for humans to control this thing from Earth. Everything needs needs to be fully automated. It needs to take off, make its flight and touch down safely without any involvement and there has been huge investment into getting this automation correct. The helicopter will ride to Mars attached to the bottom of the Perseverance rover and be placed down awaiting its first mission. This neat little video from NASA shows exactly how this is actually mounted. Firstly there's a debris shield that will protect the sensitive hardware before touchdown. This is dropped to uncover the helicopter and the rover will then move away. A release system will unlock ingenuity and 
fold it out so that it sits upright ready to deploy down to the surface. From here the landing legs need to be unlocked and snapped down into place, followed of course by the release from the rover which will drop the little helicopter a very short distance down on the Mars surface. Now another thing that many people don't realise about this mission is that the Mars surface samples are actually going to be returned to Earth if all goes to plan. The rover will be searching for any signs of past microbial life on the Martian surface. To attempt to track such life down this will be the first rover to carry a drill to obtain coring samples. Once these are drilled and analysed by the rover itself these cores will be stored away underneath the rover for that potential future pickup and return by another mission down the track. Could that perhaps be an objective contracted by SpaceX? Who knows but it's going to be amazing watching these missions roll out. Well before all of that though it's going to be amazing to watch this launch in 5 weeks or so and of course in around 9 months time we'll be nearing that touchdown on Mars. We just can't wait for this to all happen. Now over to some new updates for Crew Dragon's Demo 2 mission. Now for all of those viewers who may be new to this you may be wondering what was Demo 1. So just to set the scene here, here is a very quick recap. Demo 1 was launched on March 2nd in 2019 and saw the first autonomous docking of the Crew Dragon capsule built to transport cargo and crew to and from the International Space Station. The nose cone of the capsule opens up exposing the guidance navigation and control sensors consisting of light and thermal detection sensors, GPS and inertial measurement units which help the Crew Dragon navigate to and dock with the International Space Station. The Crew Dragon successfully autonomously docked the next day with the trip concluding its testing of systems such as navigation, receiving of commands and docking manoeuvres, all to ensure a safe and comfortable trip for its future passengers. Demo 1 went on to land in the ocean on the 8th of March becoming the very first human rated capsule to do so since the days of Apollo. So yes, here we are now with Crew Dragon's Demo 2 mission this time carrying humans back into space from America for the first time since the retirement of the shuttle back in 2011. This first crewed test flight is set to launch in under two weeks with Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley on board using SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. As we can see here Elon Musk and SpaceX as well as all of us are getting super excited for launch day here as well. So yes two very experienced and multi-skilled astronauts Bob and Doug were selected as astronauts way back in 2000. As well as being classmates they are great friends having also been to each other's weddings. Both have previous shuttle mission experience under their belts and Bob has undertaken previous spacewalk activities. Doug also flew on STS-135, the final space shuttle mission in 2011 and soon they'll both be on their way to the International Space Station as part of NASA's commercial crew program. To reach this point there was the usual rigorous training programs. As we see here both are being trained on various tasks in a mock-up of the International Space station. Bob can be seen undertaking the neutral buoyancy training to practice some sweet EVA skills here. Training underwater for up to seven hours at a time is demanding but essential of course for preparing to work in a very unforgiving environment. Here we also see some interesting sights of Bob simulating an emergency procedure where he has drifted off the station with no tether and he's using a hand controller here to make his way safely back using short bursts from his manoeuvring thrusters. Now during their time on the International Space Station both Bob and Doug will concentrate on Crew Dragon certification activities so that the Crew 1 mission can go ahead and set the stage for sustained trips and crew rotation. Bob and Doug have also both praised SpaceX and how agile they are at reacting to and resolving issues or changes that have been suggested in the lead up to this all important mission. For both of them there was a gap of around two years between their shuttle missions and in those two years they felt it was quite difficult to get the same level of change made to systems than it does in one month with SpaceX. You only need to see how quick SpaceX are churning out Starship versions to know how true this is. It's just incredible to think how great SpaceX are at adapting to change in these very fluid situations. Situations really where things can and do go wrong very easily in general. Given all the testing and safety systems here this is set to be a flawless, safe and incredibly successful mission. So yes let me know what you think Bob and Doug will get up to on this mission and maybe how long you think they'll be up there. And if you like what you've seen so far here consider tapping that like button as it lets the algorithm know that you've enjoyed this content and it helps me to share these awesome developments with you. Now SpaceX released 
test this awesome simulator to allow you to take control of the Crew Dragon and maneuver in towards the space station. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but real quick, this video is sponsored by Brilliant, who have been incredible supporters of my channel. In these current times, you may be on the lookout for online math and science resources, and whether you're a student looking to advance ahead, a professional learning new skills, or someone who just wants to use this time to understand the world better, you should check out the awesome content with Brilliant. Every single time I come back here and jump around, I find something amazing to learn more about. This complete math course library is just perfect for students as they progress through school, or professionals and hobbyists that would just like to have fun and brush up or even advance in a new area. These math courses are great at any level, whether you're looking for content on algebra, trigonometry, calculus, or even differential equations. If you're naturally curious, want to build your problem solving skills, or need to develop confidence in your analytical abilities, then get Brilliant Premium to learn something new every day. Brilliant's thought-provoking math, science, and computer science content helps guide you to mastery by taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You'll start by having fun with their interactive explorations, and over time, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Thank you very much to Brilliant for their support in this channel, and if you would like to help and support me and would like to give it a try, go to brilliant.org slash Marcus House. The first 200 people will get 20% off their first year of Brilliant Premium. The link is in the description below. So yes, back to SpaceX's simulator here. This simulator will familiarize you with the concepts of what SpaceX say here are the actual interfaces used by NASA astronauts to manually pilot the SpaceX Dragon 2 vehicle to the International Space Station. In a normal situation, this will be fully automated, of course, but in case something stops working and manual control is needed, you can experience the controls as Bob and Doug would need to. This is super cool. We can see here that we have a readout of all of our axes of rotation relative to the space station. We have our roll, our pitch, and our yaw. We need to reduce all these as close to zero as we can as we move in towards the space station. While keeping all of that under control, you also need to use the translate controls to move position up, down, left, or right. Then we control our approach speed with the plus and minus controls here. Now you need to be properly orientated to dock with the station and be moving no more than 0.2 meters per second. Now obviously here I accelerated quite hard in towards the space station at over one meter per second. Don't do that Bob and Doug, that would be bad. <laughs> now, interestingly, there is an Easter egg in here as well. I won't ruin the fun, but let's just say there is more out here than the International Space Station. Now finally, I just wanted to give a shout out here to the incredible video by Hayes Gray Art, showing the launch to orbit in real time with transparent tanks for each of these vessels. We have the very thirsty Saturn V, the Space Shuttle, the Falcon Heavy, and the Space Launch System. The fuel colors here are representing different fuel types. The red is RP-1, such as what is used in the first stage of the Saturn V and the Falcon Heavy. The liquid hydrogen there represented in orange, the SRVs also in a similar orange, and then the liquid oxygen there in blue. Just incredible work. I'll cut away from this real quick to encourage you all to go and head to the full video. Please do support that amazing work. The link is in the description. Now just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are all quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much bigger. If you like what I do and you'd love to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron only content and you can also have your name listed right here like these other amazing people. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the title in the bottom left today we have my video last week talking about Starship development, Virgin Galactic's glide test and the awesome 3D printed Starship models by Spaceship Mania. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.